I have with me Arvind Lakshmi Kumar, who is the CEO and uh, founder of uh, Tombo Imaging. Arvind, uh, believe that you've got a fresh round of funding. Who's participated in this round and how much have you raised? Uh, so we have three people who have participated in this round, uh, three large private equity institutional investors. Uh, the round is led by Walden Riverwood Capital. Mm. Uh, it's followed by, I mean, uh, the people who have co-participated along with Walden is Qualcomm Ventures and uh, Edelweiss Private Equity and Capital. Uh, total amount of money we raised is about 17 million. And uh, our existing investor, Artemin, uh, is going to be part of the board, uh, but uh, they've already invested in the company. Sure. I mean, the, earlier you had raised about six million or so, had you completely exhausted that and uh, with this 17 million coming in where exactly is the capital going to be deployed? So we raised six million dollars from Artemin in uh, 2012 and a lot of the money went into actually scaling the company at that time we were about 20 people so we are about 170 people right now we have offices around the world uh, we have customers we have 25 customers in 25 countries and uh, part of what all that money essentially went into creating that value right essentially scaling up the number of people creating more products and going uh, with the new round what we are expecting to do is we want to scale up on our international operations because we already have existing traction there we have programs in peru we have programs in middle east and south america and what we want to do is also expand on non-military markets. Mm. Uh, we have a lot of work going on in automotive, transportation, safety, industrial inspection, drone-based inspection and part of this money will go into deployment in that as well. And we are looking at some strategic acquisitions. We are looking at some acquisitions sure. right now. I mean, also if you can talk to us a little about uh, your own revenue stream and uh, in terms of the revenue where you stand today and uh, you know, you just spoke about expanding uh, on your uh, non-defense uh, non market as well. So what is the roadmap looking like? So. You know, traditionally, you know, one of the first things which we started was, uh, you know, defense has always been a very asset-heavy industry, right? And uh, when you look at technology platforms across in the last few years, every asset-heavy industry has been disrupted by tech platforms. Uh, but defense, even now when you look at defense, people think about defense as an industry where there are people with assembly lines, you know, plants, machinery. Uh, so we're looking at disrupting that platform essentially with core technology where you don't need to have assembly lines, you don't need to have plant and machinery, you need to own the design. You need to control your entire supply chain and own the customer and pretty much everything can be outsourced. Uh, to that effect, the way we looked at the defense industry was traditionally people used to build for the defense industry and move the technology to the more commercial mainstream industry. But if you look at consumer industry today, the technology is developed and surpassed what exists in the defense industry. So we want to take consumer electronics technology and move it into the defense industry. And the advantage you get to the consumer electronics industry is it's already sophisticated, it's got economies of scale, and it's got this entire ecosystem. And now if you want to move it to the defense industry, it becomes easy. And then if you want to move it back to the commercial industry, then you've already got the economies worked out. And so one of the things we are looking at is automotive is very strong market for us because driver safety, uh, the transportation safety across both automobiles, heavy vehicles, you know, boats, uh, aircrafts, that's very important. Uh, industrial inspection system, uh, you know, drone-based agricultural inspection system, solar panel inspection system. So those are markets which we are looking to move. So, but, but where does the bulk of the revenue? Come? So bulk, I mean, right now, 90% of our revenue comes from defence, uh, and 70% uh, is export market. And uh, one of the things which this becomes very significant is this is an endorsement of the Indian defence technology industry because this is the largest private equity investment in Indian defense technology today. And what the investors have found right now is the endorsement is pretty strong because we have a strong revenue stream coming from our international markets. Mm -hmm. uh, as I said, only 30% of our revenue today comes from the Indian market. More than 70% is export revenue. And uh, we expect at least for the next two, three years, the international export revenue will exceed what we make from our domestic market. Sure. Uh, Arvin, you of course work with uh, the Indian uh, you know, Air Force, the Army and uh, uh, quite integrated into the Indian defense system but uh, in terms of you know, defense offset with the private players, what exactly is the game plan because they of course form a large chunk sure. of uh, the entire defense procurement. So defense offsets is an interesting business, but uh, the way defense offsets, where people have looked at defense offsets is they have looked at it purely as counter trade, right? They said, I will, I mean, the government will you, uh, allow you to sell your equipment here, but in turn you have to buy something from India. So what we are telling our offset partners is, look, we don't want you to buy something from India. We want you to buy high-end technology from India. Uh, the way defense offsets has currently worked is uh, they would have manufacturing industries manufacture parts as part of the offset and uses to satisfy the offsets. What we have done with companies like Rafael, um, so Rafael, we are a big offset partner for Rafael, and we have told them that, look, we are not interested in doing being a manufacturing partner. What we are interested in being is being a supplier to you. So we'd like to sell you products which you can take for the Indian market, but you can also take it for your international export market. So we are looking at uh, offsets very different from traditional manufacturing offset guys in India, uh, in the sense that we want to be an OEM partner to the 
international OEM who is selling products to India. So we have large programs going on with Rafael where they buy a lot of our electro optic systems for their programs, international programs. Uh, we are doing it with uh, Finkenteri, the ship manufacturer. Uh, we are doing it with a bunch of other customers. Everything what we are saying is buy products. We will not do design, we will not do manufacturing for you. We will sell you the end product and that can be utilized for the offsets. Uh, sure. But how are the Indian PSUs here? So Indian PSU, so Indian defense industry in the last 50 years, the big problem has been, it's, it's kind of uh, been heavily skewed towards, you know, public sector un, uh, units and it's been skewed towards DRDO, right? Uh, and uh, there have been no OEMs which have come out of India and uh, the Indian PSUs unfortunately have not had the luxury or they have not really spent the time trying to build the technology themselves. So they, you know, when Indian PSUs needed, a, they would build a platform but when they needed core technology they would go to Israel or they would go to Europe or they would go to the US and buy the technology from them. Uh, our model was we don't want technology transfer from anyone, right? I mean we are an OEM so we would like to build the technology ourselves. We will sell to the end customer, we will compete with the Indian PSUs and with large uh, private players to sell to the Indian customer. If the Indian PSUs want to buy from us, we will also supply to them. So Bharat Electronics is an existing customer for us. Uh, so Bharat Electronics makes, uh, you know, upgrades for the Arjun Mark II tank. And the electro-optics package on the Arjun Mark II tank is supplied by us. So Bharat Electronics Chennai buys it from us. Uh, LNT buys from us. Tata Motors buys from us. So we do want to support PSUs and uh, Indian private houses, but not at the cost of transferring our design to them. But at the, co at the only way we will work with them is being a supplier to them. And what we are telling them is, currently you are buying from Israel and Europe. So buy from us and as an Indian manufacturer we give you all the offsets and as Indian programs go towards IDDM and buy Indian and increasingly it's going to be that they have more leverage if they buy the products from us as opposed to buying from anybody uh, else. I mean uh, a little bit about the markets that you exist in today and also with this uh, you know fresh fund uh, are you looking to kind of expand to other geographies other than sure. the ones that you exist in? So our, our focus is emerging markets right I mean so we are not really interested in I mean the only reason we sold in the US market and uh, this is a story I often tell is, is to you know, create the validation that what we are building is sophisticated enough to sell to a developed nation. Mm. But we are looking at the whole emerging market space and, uh, and the en emerging market is interesting because this is the market where which has old outdated Russian equipment which is looking to do modernization. India, Middle East, uh, Southeast Asia, South America, Africa are all countries where equipment is really old. There is a potential for modernization. Uh, we are present in all these countries. So we are present in, in all these continents, we are present in different countries. We want to expand on those, right. In India, we are present with all the commands, we are, I mean, we are there with both the Army, with, with Army Navy and Air Force. Uh, in Southeast Asia, we are in Philippines, we are in Vietnam, uh, we are there in the Middle East. We have different programs of record where we have won in those countries. Now we want to expand those programs. So part of the fundraise, so, um, the money we have raised is going to go into three buckets, right? One is going to scale up our international operations. Mm. Uh, we already have existing international operations. We are generating revenue stream from them. We are going to scale up. Second is we are going to invest in R&D for our commercial operations. So we are going to go after the automotive programs which we have started. Mm. Uh, heads up display systems, night vision systems for transportation safety. We are going to go after that. And the third we are going to do is essentially scale up in production. So mm. part of what we are doing right now is we have a lot of our manufacturing which is currently, uh, you know, contract manufactured. Uh, we also want to be vertically integrated in few areas like lasers where we want to make strategic acquisitions. Mm -hmm. So part of the money would go into strategic acquisitions because we are finding interesting companies which have core technology in lasers and photonics and we would like to acquire a few of them and we intend to use it for acquisition sure. as well. Uh, Arun, would this be that you would be setting up uh, almost a factory as such uh, sometime in the near future? Where so we don't want to set up a factory. Our model is that not to have a factory, right? Okay. I mean we are fabulous completely because there is no joy in taking that capital and investing it in heavy machinery and infrastructure because it does not generate value over a long term, right? And when you look at our model for the industry is like how Apple and Qualcomm are. So we want to be for the defense industry as what Apple is for the mobile phone industry. Where you own the design, every part of the supply chain is controlled by you and you own the customer, but you don't really have to manufacture any of it to create value, right? So it's designed by Apple but manufactured by Foxconn. It's designed by Tonbo, supplied by Tonbo, branded Tonbo, but manufactured by a ton of different subcomponent manufacturers. So I don't see value in building manufacturing at all, but we'd like to have greater vertical integration by having acquisitions in certain technology areas, that's about it. Sure. So have you kind of zeroed in on, uh, your, you know, your acquisition front? Have you Not yet, not yet. So we are, we, are, we are talking to a bunch of companies. We are looking at what companies can have value in our ecosystem. See, the advantage we have is 
in the night vision and imaging space we are a fairly strong player we sell large quantities we are present in multiple countries uh, but there are a lot of allied fields like specialized lasers which can get integrated with electro optics and currently we don't make them so we we essentially assemble a lot of them but we don't make core lasers we don't make core laser detectors so what are we are looking at companies which potentially make them and there are a few companies in europe and in uh, uh, us which make them which are relatively small but when integrated into a fold we can get more value out of them so we are looking at that so but we are not zeroed on any particular company sure. Uh, Arun, w one question finally is really in terms of uh, the market size, uh, what do you think uh, is, is currently the market size for imaging optics uh, and uh, you know, in terms of your own participation, what, 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 what percentage of this uh, market share are you looking at in the next uh, one to five years, let's say? So our investors will hope that we make at least 50% <laughs> of the market share, but the reality is you know, 30% by value of everything which is bought today in a platform, mm -hmm. right? Because when you think about drones, when you think about soldiers, when you think about battle tanks, 30% by value is the electro-optic system, right? Mm -hmm. So the market size for electro-optics is fairly large. The market size for military electro-optics in the short term is between 5 to $10 billion mm -hmm. in terms of just the electro-optics part of it. Mm -hmm. The total addressable market for mm -hmm. electro-optics spread across any smart system is roughly around 30 to $35 billion. Mm -hmm. And what we are expecting, so we are currently on programs, we are about $120 million worth of programs. So we expect that, you know, in India, we are the largest electro-optics provider out of India. And there's only an electro-optics provider who exports to foreign countries. And that's one of the things which attracted the investors is that you're not only supplying to the Indian customer, but you're... Ever. So we expect that, you know, we at least will start getting about, you know, 10 to 20 percent of worldwide market share in electro-optics within the next two to three years. Sure. Great to have you with us and uh, all the best going forward. Thank you.